Welcome to the Design Master Electrical video tutorial series. This series will show you how to start a new project, use alignment points in your drawings, create and manage panels and other distribution equipment, generate and modify a one-line diagram, create light fixtures and receptacles, circuit devices, create and circuit equipment connections and switches, and perform point-by-point -point photometrics. If you'd like to follow along, links to the written tutorial and project files can be found in the description at the bottom of this page. This video covers panels and other distribution equipment. Topics include creating distribution equipment, making distribution equipment connections, inserting distribution equipment on the drawing, inserting and customizing panel schedules, and performing various calculations. Let's get started. In Design Master Electrical, devices that distribute power, such as panels, switchboards, and transformers, are collectively referred to as distribution equipment. This tutorial only works with panels and transformers, but the concepts carry over to other devices. To create a piece of distribution equipment, Use the distribution equipment command that corresponds to the type of equipment. We'll start by running the panels command. Press the new button to create a panel, which we'll call H1. Once the panel has been created, you can begin entering information. Make changes to the voltage, bus amps, and main disconnect as shown. Then press the Save button to save your changes. Next, we'll create a second panel. This panel, which we've named L1, has its bus amps and main disconnect set as shown. Press the Save button, then the Copy button to make another panel with the same settings. We'll call this panel L2. Close the dialog box, then run the transformers command. We will now create two transformers. The first transformer, named T1, has its KVA rating and primary voltage set as shown. The second transformer, named Util, has its KVA rating, primary voltage, and secondary voltage set as shown. Press the Save button to save your changes, then close the dialog box. To connect these panels and transformers, use the Connect Distribution Equipment command. This dialog box uses a three-step process. Select the device you want to connect, the upstream source feeding the device, and how the two are connected. By default, Distribution equipment is connected to the utility, which represents power coming from outside the building. In Step 1, select the H1 panel. In Step 2, select the Util Transformer. Set the breaker slash taps to 1. Then press the Step 3 button to connect the devices. Repeat this process to connect L1 to T1. Next, we'll connect T1 to H1. Set the breaker slash taps to 1 and press the change number of poles button. Set the number of poles to 3 and press the OK button. Press the step 3 button to connect the devices. Repeat this process to connect L2 to L1. Pieces of distribution equipment can be inserted on the drawing using the Insert Plan View Block command. In this dialog box, you can set the type of block that will be inserted on the drawing, the elevation of the device, the clearance grid drawn around the block, and the layer system. With the H1 panel selected, 
set the plan view block to 8x42 panel. Then press the OK button. Specify an insertion point, rotation angle, and location for the device label. Run the Insert Plan View Block command again, and select T1. Make sure Select Block based upon KVA is checked, and press the OK button to place T1 on the drawing. For L1, set the Plan View Block to 6x20, and the left and right clearance to 5. Press the OK button to insert L1 on the drawing, then repeat this process for L2. The drawing should look like this when you finish. To synchronize your plan view blocks across different drawings, use the Insert Plan View Blocks in Another Area or Drawing command. Using the Shift or Control key, Select all three panels and T1. Then press the OK button. Because there are multiple alignment points on this drawing, you will be asked to select the area corresponding to the correct alignment point. Specify a point in the area for the first floor of the building. And the blocks will be inserted in the same location as on the previous drawing. Distribution equipment on the drawing can be moved using the AutoCAD Move and Rotate commands. Use these commands to move L2 from here to here. If you refer back to the previous drawing, L2 has been moved here as well. Panel schedules in Design Master Electrical are connected to the project database and will update as changes are made. This connection also allows you to place panel schedules on separate drawings. Run the Insert Distribution Equipment Schedule command. Select H1 and press the OK button. You will be prompted to specify a location on the drawing. The top left corner of the panel schedule will be inserted at this point. You will then be asked to insert schedules for the remaining pieces of distribution equipment. Insert schedules for L1 and L2, then press Enter to end the command. Once the distribution equipment has been inserted on the drawing, you can perform calculations for fault analysis, voltage drop, and more. First, we'll perform a fault calculation using the Insert Fault Schedule command. This dialog box allows you to configure the schedule settings, including what information is displayed. We'll use the default settings for now. Press the OK button and insert the schedule on the drawing the same way you inserted the panel schedules earlier. If you've been following along, you should receive this error message. This will occur whenever additional information is needed to fully run the fault calculation. More information about the error is available at the command line. In this case, the feeder length for H1 cannot be determined. This can be solved by inserting the upstream device on the drawing or entering a feeder length manually. To set the feeder length, run the Panels command. If H1 is not selected, you can locate it using the Next and Previous buttons or the Find button. Press the Feeder Length Settings button. Here, you can set how the feeder length is calculated or enter a length manually. Set the feeder length calculation method to Custom and the feeder length to 100. Press the OK button, then the Save button, and close the dialog box. Run the Insert Fault Schedule command again, and the schedule will update with the completed calculation. To see how changes in the distribution equipment affect fault calculations, 
run the edit distribution equipment command. Select util and press the OK button. Beside the set fault at secondary button, check the box. Here, you can lock certain figures used in the fault calculation to a set number. Make sure fault is selected and set the fault to 65,000. Press the OK button, then press the Save button and close the dialog box. Run the Insert Fault Schedule command again to see how the values change. To perform voltage drop calculations, run the Insert Voltage Drop Schedule command. As with the Fault Schedule dialog box, you can use this to set what information is displayed in the voltage drop schedule. For now, we'll use the default settings. Press the OK button to insert the schedule on the drawing. Because no loads have been defined on the distribution equipment, the voltage drop is calculated as zero. To set loads, run the Panels command and select L2. Press the Feeder and Service Calculation Settings button. This dialog box allows you to set calculation methods, demand values, and occupancy areas for calculating loads on the panel. Set metered demand to 50. Press the OK button. Then close the dialog box. Run the Insert Voltage Drop Schedule command again and notice how the values change. You can also set how voltage drop through transformers is calculated. Go to the DME customization ribbon and run the project options command. This dialog box allows you to set options for various aspects of the project, such as default calculation methods, graphics, values, and callouts. In the Distribution Equipment section, there is an option for Voltage Drop and Transformers. Here, you have three options. Transformers are ignored for Voltage Drop calculations. Voltage Drop is reset to zero at Transformers, or Voltage Drop is calculated as normal. Select the Ignore option, and press the OK button. Run the Insert Voltage Drop Schedule command again, and notice how the values change. This concludes Part 2 of the Electrical Video Tutorial Series. In the next video, we'll cover the one-line diagram.